Welcome back for our final game of the day, which has Team Liquid Academy looking to pick up a win over Counter Logic Gaming Academy. And for TLA, the promotion of their former jungler Mike Young to the Echo Fox lineup has shown gaps in TLA's play, specifically in what we, we could uh, attribute to the shot calling area. Big gaps. Fox specifically has said that Mike Young was brought in as a shot caller. Well, it turns out that when you take a shot caller from one place, you actually remove a shot caller from a home where he was. So now Team Liquid Academy needs to find a way to make shot calling work because Auto Orange and Matt are not on the same page. It's spilling over to other lanes. You got lane assignments all over the place. So it's not looking good, but it's something that can be fixed very easily. So it's a classic thing when you acquire a new player. However, you're up against CLG Academy, an opponent that is not at the top of the table. So this should be a relatively easy win, even if your shot calling is still not the best. They should be able to find those victories or that victory here. Let's meet the teams as we get out of the rift. Starting on the blue side, it's Team Liquid Academy. That means you're going to be seeing Jenkins in the top lane. The jungle for them, Odd Orange now. Insanity in mid. Sure, you would bot with Matt at support and Coach Dodo. And over on the red side, it's CLG Academy with Fallen Bandit in the top lane, Moon in the jungle, Tuesday in the mid lane, bot built by Otto, calling in his support, and their Coach X Sojin. I'm pretty sure as I was, if I'm remembering the right game, we had uh, Insanity of Vagar yesterday. So he was breaking out a few different champs for himself. Vagar is broken, mm -hmm. broken, flat out. People need to play it. <laughs> What makes it so broken? Just your it's the, the so, scaling ability. You, so you one, you got scaling. You get AP. Right? You got a lot of damage. Yeah. His damage department is hooked. But it's the cage, the baby cage. That ability is super strong, even with the delay. Because before it was instant. Now you have to linger a little bit before it actually triggers on yeah. you. But because the ratio of the stun is so high, it's like two and a half seconds max. It's right? crazy. At worst, it's two seconds. A two-second stun is a long time to be out of the fight. Did you see the the tip of being bound, bound by Morgana's black, uh, not black shield, her dark binding? What? So if you if you take a moment to look down at your debuffs, it says bound by something X lasts roughly three years. Oh, <laughs> straight up, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Somebody found it in Reddit the other day. Because uh, usually you don't like look at your debuffs when you're standing yeah, there and see like, your dying. You're trying to assess the fight. But yeah, it's pretty funny. Huh. Cool little Easter eggs in there. Karma, Aatrox being banned out here for our final game of the day. You're right, there is the Aurelia. Perma banned. Yes. Good call. She's a cool character, though, so she's a cool cat. Yeah, it's great. We used to get her and people wanted to nerf her, now we just don't see her. So there you go. You're like, oh, we, she's still there. She's just uh, <laughs> not allowed. She's the even more stronger, yeah. so it's just banned. It's kind of a solution. It's like, you know, your, your boys ask you out <laughs> to the club. You're like, yeah, I showed up, but the bouncer doesn't let me in. Like, I'm still here, I'm still supporting. <laughs> I'm just not allowed. Didn't bring enough guests. Sorry. See Jenkins with the Sage. Expected. See the Aatrox on the other side, but it is banned by CLG themselves. It's... Maybe we get that Camille. I think Silas again, right? Yep, there it is. I don't know how you Four do games. that. It's, it's almost like it was all today. So, yeah, the Steel, the Ultimate, the Tom Kench as well. So, with that chase potential we've been seeing teams use of following up on long range initiations, Tom Kench, Abyssal Voyage, you get there. You get there quick, so maybe an Ash or a Varus again. Oh, whoa. How about Who is it? this guy? <laughs> All right, so three locked in for both sides of very fast. One, two, three, as we're already into the second phase of bands. What does CLG have for TL? Looking to knock out a top laner, Jenkins. Maybe you don't need to hit him too much. Insanity did play the Vagar. You could take away a few more things. Right. He's got so, a big champion pool, though. I mean, he started the season playing Pipe. You are up against... Sorry, I can't see from here. <laughs> Can I get binoculars? Yeah. No, but you got your solo lanes available. So you got to... And you're up against Jenkins, so you banned Kennen. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure that he doesn't have that. True. So... What matters more to CLG here? Fallen Bandit's pick or Tuesday? Now, from CLG Academy's history, I'm going to say they care more about Tuesday's last pick than Fallen Bandit. So maybe a blind top laner coming out. And when you already have a fair bit of crowd control with your Varus and your Silas, maybe a GP. Ooh. I like that. Nico. 
Nico, right? But does fall in bandit play Nico? I mean, GP is going to be solid. You ban two champions that maybe you didn't want to be up against. Uh, they took I don't, it. They, yeah. They banned it. I don't think uh, I said Nico, but I don't think it actually had enough window in professional play and whatnot to be divvied up amongst people or have somebody want to try it. And no one wants to play her. Yeah. That's a sad thing, but she's so good. It's kind of that instance you get stuck in when you've played a champion so much, you're like, but I can get that satisfying Whoa. X on. Let's go! Oh. I'm not even gonna say what I was gonna say. I don't have to anymore. We're connected with the game. It's in. <laughs> and All that's right. a blind flex too. Yeah. That's like it. such a powerful flex pick. All right, so CLG Academy. And they need wins. Pull out some stops. Get something that feels good to play. Get that fun back in the mix. We're gonna get a Nico there. We also have the Abyssal Voyage Chase and some alt stealing. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like they can have fun with that. Combo. Kiana last pick out of CLG Academy because they need AD. That Nico is probably AP, and you don't want to just have the Varus. I mean, it's viable. You have a real. Yeah. I mean, I was gonna say they have a really squishy team, but you still have Sejuani. You have a real squishy team if you take Kiana. But it's cool. But it's <laughs> hell yeah, it's cool. And if you win early, it doesn't matter how squishy you are. If choosing Kiana is cool, consider me Miles Davis. <laughs> that's another throwback. So you are aging yourself, but I do know who Miles Davis is. I mean, but that's Billy Madison. No, it's a musician. No, okay, we'll stop that <laughs> conversation right now. Um, <laughs> Rumble on the left side of Corky, locked in for CLG Academy. And there it is. We do have a rumble in the top lane. Jenks is decent on that. We definitely know he plays it. Fallen Bandit, you asked. You will find we out. Got the you Nico. will find out. But the Corky in the mid lane, stagnating the mid lane matchups. Azir versus Corky. You've seen it a million times. And you've also seen Sejuani Silas four times today. Three, sorry. And <laughs> two so out true. of three, Silas won. So. The Kingslayer has destroyed Sejuani, has taken her off her. That works because she's a knight. Could soon be a king. Yeah, she's so a uh, glacial knight. Glacial knight. There you go. So knocking the knights down. Great job. No synergy resistance yeah. for her. We're on to the rift, and we are into our final game of this Friday. Until we kick off, kick off a weekend of LCS and Academy Show Match on Wednesday. Don't forget to miss LEC as well, if that's your bag. Sometimes it is. They play Mordekaiser over there. Mm-hmm. They do. Where do we start this one? So, no, Kiana's locked in. We do get a Corky for that last pickup, along with the Nico, as we saw. A lot of that Silas Sejuani we'll keep an eye on for today. Keeping those alt steals coming. And the game's going. Actually, let's see what they can synergize here. Chain of Corruption with an Equalizer. Glacial Prison with a Plop. Blossom. I said Plop. Oh, yeah, nice. And Chain Pop. Corruption Equalizer. I think Equalizer might just be the best one for to steal. Yeah. You have AP ratios too, so. True. Buff him up. And that's what I was talking about earlier. If you are a better Equalizer user than Jenkins... And you're like, I was the best Rumble in the match, even though I wasn't even playing Rumble. Yeah. And then your entire team BMs you the entire time. Like, man, I wish we had a, rum a good Rumble player. The other team's got a nice Rumble. Cleans up. Out Orange going to start his red. And we got a blue red start, so they'll meet on the top side of the map. May not meet for Scuttles, though. And they should know that with the late. Lane to shore you and Matt as they get down there. We are off and running for laning phase as the junglers get themselves pathing. We'll see how this lane turns out. We've seen a bit of the Corky and used at the right time. I was looking at that thread. Somebody said that Corky kill earlier was abrupt. And it was. He has the quite a, quite a bit of damage once he spikes to pretty much shock and awe you. Even if you think you know exactly what he's going to do in the play. That was one of those deaths that the death timer just says negative time. You're like, wait a minute. Did I die that fast? They had to make time so that I could fit in my death. In. <laughs> Woo. Auto. That's all he can do in this lane now. He is down very, very low. Of nice. It looks like it was just a level two. 
Yeah, and Diado doesn't have a Devour. Rough. Yeah, they're both level one on the right side. Ooh. That's interesting for such a long lane. And then Cannon as well, still level one. So they got pushed off very hard to start things off and down there. down a potion if that wasn't enough. So it is looking bad for the CLG bot lane department here. And as they continue to be pressured, their jungler is not coming out to help. So look at how far back he has to sit in this tower. Hopefully the Targon sacks over time will heal him back up. So they are actually on the same side for Scuttle. That's a late arrival, though, for Moon. It looks like he'll go down as he sees him on the ward right now. Or no, that's their ward, so he won't see anything. Ooh, just missed it. We pinged out. So junglers know where each other are. He's going to back and try to get down to the bot fast enough, but he loses the second scuttle. Odd Orange knows exactly what's going on, and it looks like they may try to protect it with call in for a second. He's got so much pressure from his bottom lane. I think that Odd Orange... Has found himself. Ooh, nice play out. Orange. Heck yeah. These can be called Shelly if you want. Does that make more sense? It does. You know, I used to eat things that look like that. Raw. What is that thing? We call them sea cockroaches. They're like these mussels that linger on rocks. And so my dad and I would grab a big knife and then we'd shuck them off and then squeeze lime on it, shuck them out, and then eat them. Right there? First right there. Damn. That's uh, pretty metal. Yeah, I, I also like that blade. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, what? Uh, okay. <laughs> no fake out there. Not too bad in this lane. 30 to 24. Got some bomby cinders being picked up. Moon's got it. Skirmisher Saber already. I'm gonna go and have some fun with somebody around the map. Overheated Jenkins as he backs up out of lane here, and things have not come to a first blood just yet. We have had a buy on bot lane. Auto had to go back, but it's only a long sword, so a bit of damage and farming under turret becomes easier for him, but it does not look any easier in the lane. Yeah, only a long sword, but still 18 CS down, so he is in an uphill battle to reclaim some of that gold. And he still hasn't even for sure you to use a single health potion. So Team Liquid looking fantastic in all their lanes. Ooh, that would have been a great stun on a half health Jenkins. Oh, interesting. So this is why they selected Corky as their last pick. It is going to be AD Nico split push. But this is a build that was nerfed a while ago. So... You usually go AD. Sorry, AP. Now. AP, AP. And that's why it's a little bizarre. Oh, fight for the dragon. Piercing arrow goes through, but Odd Orange is able to steal that. He's having a great jungle game for himself so far. And this has Wani. All does not get stolen there. Moon is only level four, but TL still has to look for safety here. Insanity is six, but he can't get it out. And he gets himself the safety. The alt wasn't able to do too much for the team. Great grab. A good game so far by Odd Orange. All four members flashed out of the Dragon Pit. That was a really cool thing to see when when they're all in on the yep. on the joke. I love this by Fallen Bandit. He has had the wave here at reset point for two waves now, and he's actually gonna have a third wave now reset since nothing's in the in the in the lane. I couldn't think of words. It's getting late, crumbs. Lane is a hard word to remember, apparently. I mean, you keep you keep throwing out words. We're going to land on food real soon, and then I'm going to not be able to think. <laughs> Can't do that. All right, divert. We're going to think about something else. <laughs> it's too late. I set it myself. Set I it. set myself up. Here we are to Dragon. Quick sounds. Oh, yeah. Good, good block. <laughs> I understood perfect. Soldiers. Chains. <laughs> Woof, woof. There goes Corky. <laughs> and they're out. What a fight. That was intense. <laughs> it's that next it's that next level communication. Yep. You understand Stale. perfectly. Yeah. You never Stale. need to use words. Stalemate in the mid lane. Obviously Tuesday and Insanity farming with autos from Corky and just soldiers from afar. So they haven't really met each other toe to toe just yet. Blue will be transferred over to Tuesday as he's very low on resources and Fallen Bandit 
Not really getting too much of a lane lead here. Jenkins is doing a great job at just absorbing the auto, scrap shielding up, and keeping the flame spitter down to not push himself, but pick up these minions. Fallen wants to keep trading, but this is an all-in now. The equalizer barely whiffed, but I think Jenkins has the Oh, lead. I like it. He's like, walk this way, come over. Oh, which one does he chase? Which one does he chase? Oh, he's autoing the other one. He can get a harpoon out here in just the last bit. The flash forward. Oh, he burns him down. Doesn't even leave the harpoon to chance. You can't play with fire like that. <laughs> Nico is not that strong anymore as a split pusher. I don't get it. He went back and touched. Oh, Fallen Bandit. He doesn't even have Teleport now, so he's going to lose all of that CS in the top lane. And the Rumble is just so happy, so thrilled to be doing that because bottom lane is winning too. So all lanes for, for TLA are just on a complete roll. It's only mid lane that's splitting, but honestly, if you can't split this lane, then there are way bigger problems. TLA is just, oh, they definitely have a playoff spot looking for themselves, but they're looking to push up a little bit further oh, he missed in the, the standings. Missed the cannon. Shh, we don't talk about that. Not, not allowed. I don't know why that happens. You could lackadaisically farm, like, the first two waves or whatever, and the cannon comes up, and you try so hard. It's so you, important. You mess up. It's like four you're trying. minions. Because you're trying. It is. I usually just save an ability for cannon every time. It's like, I'll use a spell for it. It's worth the gold. I've resorted to A-clicking always on cannon. Because if you don't click it, you click next to it, you're still attacking the closest thing to your A-click, so you'll not miss the cannon. A-click, people. And and use that other one that targets only only champions, too. You got to set that up or something, don't you? I think it's the like squiggly one. The, the tilde? The, yeah, the tilde. The one that is yeah, to yeah. the left of the number one, one but yes. not on your keypad. Yes. Uh, I remember MIA talking about that when he supported. Yeah. How he shielded yep. and how he made sure he was getting support uh, abilities on the right things. Good or guy. you could just be better at clicking. <laughs> <laughs> you are asking too much. Odd uh, Orange not looking good. He had such a good start, but they will pick that right back up. Sweep him off his feet and pick up a little gold on the side of Counter Logic Gaming. A push in the bot side as well as Colin and Otto doing their damnedest to just stay alive. They might be down 20 CS, but they're better off if they can just absorb this pressure and Shoryu does not get a lot out of it. Yeah, when your jungler just 1v1s the other jungler, 1v1 in air quotes, <laughs> you have a new lease on life in the mm -hmm. bottom and thinking, all right, guys, just survive. Just keep surviving. And hopefully the rest of the team is telling the bottom lane, guys, we got this. Listen, calm down. It's not the end of the world. Because that happens a lot. You know, AD bot lane players tend to be the kind of players that will tilt the soonest if things are not going their way. If you're down CS, you're giving up kills, like, guys, there's no point playing AD carry anymore. I'm going to be useless the rest of the game. I'm going to be assassinated. So I've found myself oftentimes just being the soothing voice saying, hey, guys, you know, it's okay. We all have those games. Too much. Some more than others. Tuesday with blue. It's real quiet. 1-1 one, one for those mid laners. And the, this is the kind of thing is like, I, I think if you let uh, an Azir and a Corky go, like, just even the whole game, they're going to come out real big. So impact plays have to come from those two once we get into these team fights. We're only 11 and a half minutes in. Not any core, core items have been finished up just yet, but you're kind of setting up this explosive team fight where they can just unleash that first item on each other. It doesn't even mean level six is going to be activating these alts. I usually see Azir do more early and then Corky do more late. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, one has utility with an ultimate, a bit of a better dash. It's not linear. It's You can bend it like Beckham. Shout out to the movie. I, didn't, I, I saw part of it. I think Victoria Beckham was in it. Sweet. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've actually ever seen that movie, and I've played for 18 years. Uh, you're not missing out on much. Sweet! Yeah. Actually, Ladybugs. Now that's a good movie. Oh, I remember Rodney what Dangerfield playing soccer. It's a good soccer movie. The Big Green has a goat. It's about soccer. Good I haven't movie. seen it. 
12 and a half minutes in though, the rift is green, and that's my transition back into the game. Oh. Boom. Sorry, I just remember what the movie was actually about. Oh. It's, I think it's uh, a girls soccer team yeah. that is inspired by David Beckham. And then maybe one of them dates him or meets him. I thought it was just a girl that was really good. No, I think she was in a team. Like a, a well, she girl. is, but it's about her mostly, isn't it? I don't think I she don't dates David know. Beckham. Pretty sure that's not how it <laughs> works. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I don't know if there are I mean, any rails listen, for this train to ride on way right back, now. Way back in the day, who, like, when he was at his prime, who wasn't going to date David Beckham? Everybody wanted David Beckham. I would have dated Alexi Lawless first. Who is that? See? You know, start a soccer conversation. You don't know your <laughs> soccer players. <laughs> I know <laughs> soccer balls and field posts, all right? That's all you need to play soccer. <laughs> oh, Jenkins having a good game here on the top side. Fallen Bandit just looking to keep himself alive. There's a, there's a plate. Wait for the plate, brother. Yes. That's big brain. He heard it. He heard it. <laughs> if he just went away, I would have been so sad. We see that happen actually quite a bit when you're just kind of focused on what you have in mind. You're like, oh, I need to buy now. You don't consider the plate. To walk away from a plate is to be the kind of person that walks away from a $20 bill on the floor. That's, that's who you are. If you, you see it and there's no one around, no one has been there forever, you just show like, oh, there's just a 20 here. And you're like, you know what? No, this is for the floor. That's who you are. I give that 20 back. Right, you can give it back and that's fine. I am such a karma person. I'm like, I know this 20 is not mine. There's been a day when I was younger working at the grocery store and I'm like, I need this 20. But you know the crazy Somebody thing. might need that 20. Here's, here's the karma thing that I didn't know until I read this book that I was like, whoa, that's deep. It's karma like karma is not personal. It's not your personal karma. It's like one big wheel where everyone's involved. Oh, so snap. if you put bad in it, it doesn't mean that bad's going to come back to you. It just means that bad is going to hit somebody else. That's why karma is never in any games, because yeah. bad is coming to you. <laughs> she is. But if you do something nice, it means positive karma is yeah, everywhere, yeah. too. So it's Big monster means, shield. Yeah, whatever you do will, I guess... Um, propagate itself so do good things and more good things will come do bad things and more bad things will come overall not even by choice so that means you have to do good things exponentially to yes. offset the crap exactly oh this is getting too yes. tough back to league back to league <laughs> <laughs> four minutes on the inferno yeah, let's get some action in this baby it's our last game of the day and everybody seems to be a bit timid here we did see on the intro it's it's beautifully dusk outside the pink sky is setting. Pink sky at night, sailors delight. Pink sky at morning, sailors take warning. True story. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Watch out. I do like that our intros are time sensitive. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Movie details could be in a red thread. Means you got to watch it multiple times to really capture the intricacy. <laughs> Crumbs is actually yeah. on fifth waving yeah. to you in that <laughs> second intro. No. Good. I would film that. You'd film yourself? I'm I'm by those streets off. Interesting. Ooh, this is where you start getting strong as Fallen Bandit, but you don't have a minion wave to hide behind now. You might want to be a little careful for those harpoons to connect. Flame so Spitter will much. take you down. This is a heap and helping of damage here, and he's going to be building up that wit's end next because he needs it when you're dealing up against a yeah, very strong absolutely. Level. Oh, look, she's got a tree. It's Ivern. What the hell? Oh. She melds with the tree. Oh, dude, you're thinking right. You're thinking right. Do it, Jenkins. What? Oh, so he, wow. he man, he, this guy's so safe, he'll look both ways when crossing a one-way street. Well, you have to, because somebody could still be going one way. Well, you don't need to look both ways. They're but only crossing one way. The wrong way is still the one way. <laughs> Two to one. Oh, Matt misses the clear. They're going to have vision on him coming around the backside of Harold Dean. Good take on the Rift Harold. They find that it is theirs, even with a piercing arrow flying across the backside. They're going to pop it mid. They want that mid tower. They do it right now. Yeah, boom. You're not going to be getting plates top or anything. So take it down, open the map, get those wards pushed forward, and find a way to take down CLGA even more. Matt. Playing a bit of the back and forth cat and mouse game with his Rakan as he makes a grand entrance and gets himself out. 
Boom! Well, nice hits on the Rift Herald to take down mid and just about half HP of the second tier. TLA, slow work of this game so far, but it doesn't look like they're really giving CLG any opportunities to get back in. And CLG kind of don't have any opportunities to get themselves back in. It's going to have to be an awesome Nico ultimate or that stolen Sejuani. I don't think Nico's that great to be able to actually win the 1v1 like a Jax would against a, a Rumble. So he just has to stain and. What about a 2v1? Oh yeah, now we're talking. Oh, 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 call out Orange. There it is. Almost didn't see him at first. Moon was definitely focused on that bot side, but he sees out Orange at the last second, and they get to safety. Look at this double farming. Growing up here, Kingslayer over. Oh. You know what would be the, the most troll name I can think of right now is naming yourself something like OK Google or something Alexa so that every time you you hear it the, your phones get triggered thinking that you, what? you're talking to them have you just been on this for the last two fights <laughs> oh no okay Google see no it doesn't yeah. work phone bandit goes down yeah he, he's overextended four people are in base and you are at a place without a tower not a good time to split push yeah, it becomes a little difficult. It seems like CLG is kind of pushing the the limit of what they are able to do here. They're really under the never cross river without a ward rule of thumb type of thing. Now things are falling apart, so they have to do the buddy system. We'll see where even Fallen Bandit continues to go. He might have a wave to clear on the bottom, but it's already kind of getting itself stacked up, so it's going to push away from them as this Drake goes over. And the third one of the game, we finally get all three elements in one game. Nice. That are going to spawn. There you go. Infernal Cloud and Mount for TLA. Wait, but what about, what about Wind? You don't get Cloud. You only get three elements in a game. So now you'll only get those three Drakes. No, but the ele it's, it's an, an important element of creation. I know, but you can't have it. Oh, God. Nice. You got to hold your breath for the rest of the game. <laughs> nice equalizer. Oh, the cookage. It's happening right now against CLG. Forward goes TL, but Matt doesn't want to throw down any more to get into the fight. His ultimate's coming up in just a second. If they can taunt this out a little bit longer, he actually has the quickness to make it work. Tuesday's not in a great spot. Sure, he's trying to tempt and see if they have that distance to close, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen right now. Jenkins just over that heat gauge, so he's doing a bit more damage with his abilities as he keeps it at that 75-80% mark. CLG is not weak. They just can't fight against Rumble. Jenkins is mm -hmm. just crazy strong right now. You have a Leandri spike about to hit that Rhylize and beyond it, level two equalizer. So you just can't mess with the Rumble at this point when you have that many carries because Nico Top is really an AD carry. She's just one step above Vayne Top. Think about her. Think of her like that from now on. And then you realize, wait a minute, we can't really team fight like we usually do. What a great Sonya. This is the turnaround that CLG is looking for. You were saying they were pretty strong. If they can finish the fights, this is going to be a huge advantage. You just came up on 21 minutes into the game. Baron is up, and CLG gaining ground here could be the game changer. Insanity is inside the pit. Nobody's touching Baron to do extra damage. Finally! Here's the thought from Otto, and he just misses. Oh. Equalizer comes out, but it's not able to cook anybody up at the moment. A little too slow on the aggro on the Baron. It would have been perfect so if they good. aggroed it at the same time. All right, moving up. CLG still get a lot of good ground there in Crumbs. They do show you that power that they have. They just weren't able to find the fight until they could get around Jenkins and Insanity's initiation. Yeah, they, they don't need to be scared. They need to just continue to fight and fight where they're strong, look at their items, and don't worry about the rest because the engage began going on to Tom Kent which is as good as it gets for TL. Sorry, for CLG. Mm -hmm. Everybody else tries to flash in, but with the lack of force that are going to the left side of mid lane, they don't think that Azir is going to come in. And let's see, could anybody oh. have proc this? Otto thought about it yeah. instantly. Yeah, he thought about it instantly, but he was just so low. I yeah, think far away and low. One, maybe Tuesday if he ran that way, but yeah, it... it it was a hard one. Yeah, that was unfortunate for Tuesday, too. He, I think he Valkyried over the first wall and then couldn't get over Pit. So he's like, I can go, maybe? Oh, I got to go around Raptor's side. That always feels bad when you know you're out of the fight for like three seconds of walking distance. Moon. 
hovering in the brush. He says, come here, I need some help. I might get an engage here. So they don't have vision on Baron. They're going to have to go back and get that, but they're happy to do so slowly. They don't think TL's taking it. Yeah, I can't wait for CLD to play Clutch so that we can have Moon versus Sun. Oh, my God. And then Twilight. Pshaw. Or Eclipse, sorry. I don't know how a Twilight is made. <laughs> Twilight is right now. We're basically in Twilight. Oh, it's just when the sun's going down? I thought so. It's like Dusk Twilight, I thought. Something like that, or like they're almost the same thing. I don't know. There's that Wit's End we were mentioning earlier. This is kind of a slowdown for Jenkins' items. He hasn't been able to put too much more in after the uh, Leandry. So I was going to call it a Glacial oh. Base. The Leandry's Torment. Not a slowdown, <laughs> though. The Oblivion Orb is... Dude, yeah, that's a, that's a lot he of damage. He was able to get it pretty recently, so sticking the blasting wand in after that, and the penetration goes through the roof. It's the same amount as if he had Sork Shoes, so mm -hmm. it's like he has Merc Tread, Sork Shoes, and Leandries against Cut, got Barry a Minimum. Shoes on his hands. <laughs> Ready to horse around. Perfect. I saw this video the other day of do tell a uh, a girl that really loves horses, and then learned to gallop like a horse. I've seen that. That is amazing. It's actually <laughs> crazy because she's her, good. Looks like a horse. <laughs> like my hips and joints do not move like that. I love her hips and joints are stopping already. When she does the jump and then does a little kick back, like oh yeah. <laughs> you have to. You got to clear it. I mean, high jumpers, we jump backwards, but you clear with you clear with a kick forward. It's an animal thing. <laughs> oh, just I just love seeing how people use their time. We play games all day. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. And that's what I'm gonna do after not, this. Not that far off from doing horse uh, <laughs> horse impersonations. Horse play, nay nay. We're on dragon. It's gonna be an infernal. Looks like this could be this could actually be big damage. That first infernal for CLG, but oh my word. I said it could be big damage. I did not mean to the health bars. They instantly lose two members and the ones you need to take down the objective in the jungler in top lane. TL looks great after that, and they're heading right for Baron. Oh my word, and CLG with an identity crisis. There are two members on the dragon, three others pushing the lane. Yeah. What's going on? There was no communication, and now they find themselves two man down, trying to defend a Baron when you don't even have a jungler. Uh, Dream Steel is the only thing that could happen for CLG. Oh! Whoa, you yep. saw the one HP. Yep. <laughs> Almost a dream there. For sure, somebody woke up too soon though. we will see this fight again. And yeah, where is everybody else? You, they're on <laughs> minions in middle. Yeah. <laughs> How much more of a please fight us do you need? Yeah, that, not, nothing more to that. There's really no breaking that down. It's no. 5v2. But do, get really granular. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, you see, when you outnumber your opponent two and a half to one, you can afford to miss roughly 50% of everything and still win. Wow, usually you don't see that kind of disparity between yeah. the 80 carries, 14 to 11. That is big, actually. From level one, too, because yeah. he got all in level one. Yeah, so that was tough. The whole time they have really been able to keep him off minions. And at this point, you're basically sharing CS with everybody. They're going to give you the last hit, but... That experience is going across the board, so he's going to have a little bit of trouble catching back up. Everybody else is pretty much on par with the levels they should be at, so still waiting for CLG to scale a bit here, but they don't really have much time to do any of that. Yeah, the scaling train has left. Mm -hmm. yeah, no refunds. <laughs> no refunds. Rip that ticket up like you're at a horse race. That's, a, that's gambling. Yes, it is. I've never Red seen one. Although I hear people really like it, but I got told that dog racing is more entertaining than horses because at least there's variety with the kinds of dogs, and sometimes the dogs can just do funny things like, oh, look, they just stopped, and now it's looking at somebody or chasing a pigeon. They got off track, whereas the horses, 
they're all very similar and you know they're actually trying to win here's the thing about the type of person that i am in that situation i think about that and being at the track for four hours and seeing a funny dog do something but then i'm like i can play games for four hours bam pop blossom onto jenkins he's dead for four hours actually just 48 seconds but still a long time and they are going to keep going towards the base. It looks like they could get some real good damage down in the inhibitor turrets. All oh, of CLG is pretty much outside the base, except for we have Auto and Moon here. And it looks like they are going to get both all back and forth. Nicely done. No one's better than the other on that one. And they do get a kill onto Moon on the way out. Here comes the teleport in. This is going to be coming in from Nico. Home guards off the base. Tries to throw off the clone. If he can get the damage down, trying to stop Matt so he can't provide the crowd control and utility, but he goes down himself. A nice try by the Nico for the Sneeko. Colin's gonna fall here to the hands of Insanity. Can't move forward. Otterwards with the flash and the flay on the flail. Nice job, I like it. It's gonna be a knockdown on the inhibitor. And looks like they're going for the Nexus. Trust misses Otto on the heels of the Varus. He's out of the found for safety and solace, but it's not gonna be enough. They go down and TLA will get a much needed win as they're sitting around that fourth spot in the standings. And they'd love to find themselves just a little bit higher. Team Liquid Academy take down CLG Academy. And they do so in great fashion. Exactly what you need when you started adding a new member. Everybody just won their lane. The jungler doing his job, securing objectives left, right, and center, even when it looked like it could have been stolen. It feels good. They came out strong, and I think everybody around the map was kind of doing their part in that game. It didn't help that we saw uh, the bot lane just getting shut down right away. You really want to at least have an AD being able to do something, and it wasn't <laughs> even, like you said, in the state, in the situation of, all right, a little bit of a breath. My jungler and top <laughs> lane are getting lots of kills. You're like, that doesn't mean I can sit back more. Like, all right, guys, <laughs> where are those kills again? <laughs> we're nervous over over here so looking back into that game we're gonna replay right into the last fight and how big it was for the teams obviously TLA had full control and just the split where CLG was they were always a step behind TL hard outplayed the rest of CLG Academy here so two points of notice look at Insanity's Azir and Rakan who just W'd the Nico so Corky obliterated you have never been outplayed that hard the emperor's divide put you against a wall no chance whatsoever and this this is really cool out of odd orange spam flash on the second instance knowing that there is just enough damage and it would have been cool to see that this one would have worked too but you don't need that last kill at the end of the day when you got a game that clean the kills are just icing on the cake yep very strong across the board you can see the rid of the discrepancies match up as well as another 1,200 damage from that Ooh. bottom lane. Wait a minute, something is odd here. How come Odd Orange had less damage than the town Kent who got bodied in lane? That doesn't seem right to me. Looking for, it's for that percentage damage, devours and everything. Maybe, we'll see. So to give us his thoughts on that game, Odd Orange is joining us for an interview via Discord. What's going on, man? Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. What's up? Hello. How you guys doing? Welcome Hello, back Trump. to Professional League of Legends. Yeah, thank you. I hear you. Uh, I heard you flaming me. Flaming? You? Well, you did 2.1k no, no. damage, yeah, yeah, my yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. TK <laughs> did more. TK yeah, did more. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> how are you? Not much damage. How how are you getting used to filling in Mike Young's spot? Because he was a pretty vocal shot caller for TLA. Like, is there like a guidebook of here's what we need from a jungler, or are they just letting you loose? Um, well, when I first started practicing with these guys, Mike was there and he was giving me some help in the first weeks before he transitioned over to Echo Fox. So he gave me some. I was honestly not struggling so much with the comms, I would say. It was more so like getting back into clearing competitively. Like I played amateur for seven months and in amateur, you can literally just run around the map and kill people. And like, but if you do that in a higher level gameplay, like obviously Academy is not the highest level gameplay, but higher than amateur. And I would be doing that and like I'd do these weird pathings and I'd really screw over my teammates. So I'd say that's more so what I'm working, I was working on until now. I'm trying to get more consistent querying. Awesome. And we've seen quite a bit throughout the day. Obviously, people are picking the Sage, but we're seeing a lot of yeah. Silas now instead of this Trundle. What is it? And, like, which actually side of the matchup do you prefer, the Silas or the Sage? I mean, the Sil uh, the Sejuani has much more guaranteed engage. You're tankier, too, so it's easier for you to frontline for your team. 
um and you you have you have your r all the time mm -hmm. as well and when silas can only take it every three minutes or so four minutes so i personally prefer the sejuani side of it i think it's better okay the silas has more 1v9 potential and i think that's why a lot of junglers like playing it because you can really carry the game with silas by yourself um but i think it's a a bit overrated like in, in slower games mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'll agree with him yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what what are your goals here for coming into because you were playing an academy in you said a league below academy in amateur and yeah i take it that you were practicing there to go into academy and then hopefully make it into the lcs like are there benchmarks yep. that you're looking for in your performance or whether you're in separate leagues or what what is it um well now that i'm back in academy i I mean, I really think I lucked out with the opportunity I'm given. I think everybody on this team is like really insane laners. So if, if that's your team and you're the jungler, like it's up to the jungler to help the laners. Like if your laners are really good, it's more so, you know, it's easy, it's easier time for your jungler. So I want to win this split with, with the boys and then maybe join an LCS team next year. That's my goals. Nice. Do it for the boys. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Well, you're already putting up some awesome plays, and uh, uh, what's on the rift looks great. So congratulations, Odd Orange, and best of luck moving forward with Liquid. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you later. Appreciate it. See you. See you. All right. So before we wrap up the day, let's take a look at how the teams stand. Cloud9 still hold a firm grip on first place, while Golden Guardians have taken over second. TSM are half a game ahead of 100 Thieves and Team Liquid, with Optic, Fox, and Clutch all tied for sixth. CLG and FlyQuest sit at the bottom of the table at the end of the day. Academy has wrapped for this week, which means the LCS is just around the corner. Tomorrow starts off with TSM versus Clutch Gaming. Then a battle for first place between Team Liquid and Counter Logic Gaming. Do not miss that one. Followed by a whole weekend of matches before the Academy Showcase on Sunday. Well, we'll be back, which will have Cloud9 Academy versus TSM, TSM Academy facing off after the LCS cool down. How are you feeling about those matchups? I cannot wait. It is dark now, but I'm feeling great, especially TL versus CLG. Oh, boy. Because we just saw the Academy teams play, Heck yeah. right? So if there's any indication that both these teams are giving it their all, it's the fact that they're in first place in the LCS and that it could be the Renaissance era for it, CLG. Is it? Is it really back? When's the last time that El Clasico was a rivalry? That they, they were. They, they're the, you're always the old guard, but when are you the old guard that people can't beat, and you're actually the ones that people need to? They just beat TSM. They yeah. stopped that losing streak, and now they're going to try to take down they're TL. So I think CLG sick. is looking good. If that's too long to wait, coming right up is a rebroadcast of this morning's LEC matches ahead of their live day two broadcast starting at 8 a.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Central European time. Now for myself, Crumbs, and the entire Academy crew, thank you for watching, and meet us right here for the LCS tomorrow. Good night. Yeah. This is an all-in now. The equalizer barely whiffed, but I think Jenkins has the Oh, lead. I like it. He's like, walk this way. Come over. Oh, which one does he chase? Which one does he chase? Oh, he's honoring the other one. He can get a harpoon out here in just the last bit. The flash forward. Oh, he burns him down. Big damage. That's first Infernal for CLG, but oh my word. I said it could be big damage. I did not mean to the health bars. They instantly lose two members and the ones you need to take down the objective in the jungler in top lane. Tries to throw off the clone. If he can get the damage down, trying to stop Matt so he can't provide the crowd control and utility, but he goes down himself. A nice try by the Nico for the Sneeko. Colin's gonna fall here to the hands of Insanity. Can't move forward. Out orange with the flash and the flay. 